What's Gucci everybody, it's AJ here again, and today I'm going to be a video about shell sorting. And shell, the shell sort is a better algorithm than the insertion sort. Essentially, it uses the insertion sort, insertion sort to break down the problem more. Before I get too into this video, I would like to add that in the um, description section below this video is annotations as to where I describe certain things in the video. So if you just want to look at one specific thing, you can look there and just click and you'll be teleported there immediately as is the magic of technology. Now this the shell short was invented by Donald L. Shell. So that's pretty easy. Um, it was just named after him. And what it does is it uses um, shell sorting and it uses the insertion sort, but it breaks it into smaller pieces so that the algorithm will be a little bit faster, the worst case scenario. Now, this algorithm has a big O of N, N to the 3 half. So N to the 2.5 is the big O. I mean, N to the 1.5 is the is the big O instead of n squared. So it's better than a regular insertion sort of n squared. Not too much better, not a whole, um, you know, layer better. It's not n log n, or it's not n log n. But, you know, it's it's better, and so I thought it'd be good to teach it, and I love teaching things that I learned and putting them up on YouTube. It encourages me to do better, too. So as you can see here, I have the array I'm going to sort here, and I have at the top the indexes, zero, 0 through 9. So this array has a length of 8, and as you can see, I have an array, an unor pretty unorganized array. Not as unorganized as can be. Uh, the most unorganized array would be um, the reverse way. I would want it to be organized, but it's pretty unorganized, and I think you'll get how to do that. And so what we're going to do here in this shell sort is we need to do a few things. Is We're going to be using the insertion sort algorithm. So if you haven't seen my video on insertion insertion sort I suggest you watch that so you get it because I will be doing that in smaller pieces in this video but what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to break up this array and then I'm going to do insertion sorts on what I break the arrays into and then I'm going to bring that array together more and I'll show you guys how to do that so um, a big thing in this sh shell sort is I need something called a gap value and a gap value is simply the length starts out as starts out as being the length divided by two of the array. So did I spell that wrong? Yeah, I did. Length divided by two of the array or data structure you want to. So in this case, um, it's ten divided by two equals five. So that's the gap value. And let me put some space um, down here because I, I want to see. Now what I'm going to do here is I, I'm going to make many sub-arrays using this gap value. And by using this gap value, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to be able to um, basically create, a, create many sub-arrays using the gap value. And the way I'm going to do that is... The gap value is what it is. It's a gap between the values of the subarrays I'm going to make. So let's say I'm going I'm going to make a subarray starting with an index, the index of zero here. My arrows are terrible here. Um, since my gap value is five, I'm going to look at zero and then say, okay, that's going to be part of let's say subarray one, and then I'm going to go over one, two, three, four, five elements to fifty-seven, and there we go. And so, um, 40 and 57 are part of my subarray. And um, then I'm going to go over five more elements. One, two, three, four, five, which puts me here. But that's... <coughs> Sorry, guys, I had to sneeze. <coughs> I had to sneeze again. Um, that puts me out, out of bounds, so I don't have to worry about. So that, that subarray, I will have... Um, will have two elements, so 40 and 57. So that's one subarray. Now I'm now I'm going to look at one, and I'm going to get rid of these two since I've already done zero and five. I'm going to look at one, and I have a subarray. I have 80 as one of my subarray elements, and I go over five, and I'm going to get 34. So 80 
and 34. And as you can see, the first subarray with 40 and 57 is in order relative to just those two elements, but the bottom one isn't. And now I'm going to do this. I can do this. I hope you're getting the pattern. I can do this um, a few more times. I'll have to do it, I believe, five times. So then I've get I've got 35, and now I and then for and then I've got um right no I not 34. I've got 90 in my next subarray because you can just do it like two. 2 plus 5 is the seventh index, so I've got 35 and 90. And then I'm going to have um, 75 and 70. And then I'm going to have 60 and 45 as my last ones, I believe. I would like to note that it is possible my array has an even length, but if it has an odd length, one of one of these subarrays would have one more element than all the others. For instance, if I had a, if I had a sub, if I had an array of length 15, there would be a subarray with length 3, and all the others would have 2, and that's perfectly okay. So, I'm, I just want to say that that there's nothing wrong. The length of the subarrays won't ever di differ from one because it, it would just be an even or odd case. Um, okay, so now I have all of these subarrays. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do an insertion sort on the subarrays. So I only have to do an insertion sort on, in this case, two elements or um, a lot less of the elements or the elements divided by two. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to perform insertion sort on these subarrays and, put, and then put them back in the relative, in the, the same indexes of the subarrays that I started out with, that I picked out in the beginning. And what do I mean by that is that I'm just going to switch the order of where I found these so if, if I need to. So for instance, 40 and 57 I found right here. So if those, if those are in different order or if one comes before the other or they're out of order, I will switch them at those indices and not put them anywhere else. But in this case, 40 and 57 are not out of order, and doing insertion sort will not change that. So 40 and 57, let me make sure I do this right, yeah. So 57 will go here. But now, when I do an insertion sort on um, 80 and 34, I'll put in 80 to my subway, and then I'll put in 34. So this will actually, using the insertion sort on this algorithm, will be, will change it to 34 and 80. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put 34 here instead, and instead of the 80, replacing the 80, and then I'm going to have the 80 where the 34 is because now I'm, as you can see, I'm trying to put these in, a, trying to get at least some order here and breaking the problem down, which is pretty cool. So now that I've done that, my third array with 35 and 90 is in line, so I'm just going to um, put those back where they were. And now I've got 70 and 75. Those are not in order. So 70 is going to go here. And 75 is going to go here. Notice the order is not, it's not, we're not going to be done with our algorithm after this solution yet. But we're getting better. And 60 and 45 is out of line. So 45 is going to be swapped with 60 essentially. And there we go. So as you can see, relative to those positions, we have ordered all of these positions in just those two. So now that we've done that, what we're going to do is that we have now completed that part. But what we need to do is now we need to de we now need to decrease the gap length so we can have bigger we can have a bigger subarray and then sort those. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that gap length that we had of 5 and we're going to divide it by 2 again. So 5 divided by 2 and that equals, um, well, we have to round down so that equals 2. Or, yes, 2. And my computer automatically did it for me. That was pretty cool. So, like I, so what we're going to do here is we're going to have subarrays. Let me erase all of these in the top right here. We're going to have subarrays of... 40, um, 40 and 35, 30, okay, well, I guess, I guess I'll just write them down. We're going to have subarrays of 40 and 35, 
I'm left-handed. I don't know if you guys could tell by this. 45, um, 45, and then I've got 80, and now I've got 75. So now I've got half the elements in this, and then in the other subarray, I'm going to have 34, 30, oh no, 70, 57. So I'm doing every other one because my gap is only two, so it's just every other one. 90 and 60. And okay, so now I'm going to perform mer merge sort on these, and if and they're kind of partially sorted, which is kind of nice. So what I'm going to do, so what I notice here is that I need to I need to do that. So what I do, so what I'm going to notice here is I'm going to perform insertion sort on those, and for this array, I'm going to get 35, 40, 45, 75. And 80, you can see it. And now I'm gonna, I'm gonna, and I'm gonna put that in the array here. So I've got, yeah, 35, 40, 45, 75, and 80. And in the other array, you can see I've got 34 here. Then I've got 57. Then I've got 60. Then I've got 70. Then I've got 90. And with those. I've got 34, no, yeah, no, I do have 34, I've got 34, 57, 60, 70, 90, going back to their perspective places, going back to the same indexes of where I found this subarray. So now that I've done that, now I'm going to divide my gap value by 2 again, and I'm going to get one this time and this will be the last iteration because the last step is always when I get my gap value equal to two. So two divided by two is equal to one obviously and I'll let my computer finish that up. So now I'm just doing a regular insertion sort on the whole array and if you notice here um, the thing that makes so since I broke down the problem I basically have in some, I've sorted some of the elements. I've kind of done a little a sort a few times to ensure that I won't that a worst case scenario can't happen. That I've at least shifted things around enough that basically the main back elements are towards the back, and the main things in the in the beginning are towards the beginning. Uh, look, like like 34 is the smallest element, but it's on, but it's not the smallest now. It's the second smallest, so that's okay. So it won't it will only take um, two steps to insert that in the correct way. So, for instance, all 34. So then, so now, it will only take me one insertion to bleak. So I'll put in 35 in my insertion, and then put in 34 below that, and I can put in 35, and I don't have to worry about going through all the elements, like which can be the main problem in this insertion sort. So now I just yeah, if you know how what's going to happen, you can give it out here, but. I essentially just do one more insertion sort over this preordered ordered array because I broke down the problem. So I'm going to have 40. I'm going to have 45. I'm going to have 57. Right? I just I don't want to make sure I'm wrong here. Um, 70. 75. Oh, I messed up here. Yep, I did. Um, 60 is where 70 was, and this is 70, and this is 75, and this is 80, and this is 90. So there you go. This kind of seems more complicated than insertion sort, but since you break down the problem and are able to order things in premature steps, it it's big O or worst case scenario is not n squared, it's n to the 1.5, which is nice, and that's what makes cell, shell sort all nice and flamboyant and um, pretty cool. I thought it was a pretty cool algorithm. And I really liked it and want to work with it in the future. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, guys. And I um, have a great day. And never, ever, ever give up.